Hey Glam Fam, welcome back to my channel. This is MUA Mommy here. Today's video is going to be an in-depth makeup tutorial for beginners with an everyday wearable eye look. And if you're interested in seeing how I do this, keep on watching. And in the description, I will have the timestamps below for each section of this makeup look. So if there's some things that you actually don't care to learn about, then you can skip through them. Again, if that's what you're interested in, keep on watching. Alright, so I'm going to start off with my primer and my brows. This is how I usually start off with my makeup. The reason why I do my brows and my eyes before I do the rest of my face is when there is fallout, it's easier to wipe away fallout when you don't have the rest of your base on for something to stick to. I just don't like making a mess. It's your personal preference, really. You can do whichever it is that you like. This is just how I do it. I would also like to point out that you do not have to use any of the exact same products that I am using in this video. You can use whatever products you have and that you feel comfortable with. This is just what I have and what I'm using. Anything will work, I promise. So I'm going to start off by priming my face. I use Elf for this putty primer. The purpose of a primer is to keep your makeup lasting all day long. It acts as like, think of like when you're painting and you put down a base first. This is basically the base before you paint your face. That rhymed. I am going to put this on with BH Cosmetics 137 brush. Take a generous amount. This is what it looks like. And then if you see me looking back here or something, it's because this is where my big mirror with lights is. I do have my little handheld mirror here too. It just depends on what I'm doing. This primer is going to go everywhere. So it goes all over your face. This is one of my new current favorite primers because it literally just vanishes your pores. And I think that's amazing because I hate my pores to be shown. Now, a good primer is going to be sticky, a little bit tacky. That is good. You want that so you'll, your foundation and everything has something to stick to. I am probably sound like a broken record with saying that, but I can't stress enough how important a primer really is. Now, again, this makeup look is an everyday makeup look that anyone can do. Beginner, novice. I don't know if beginner or novice are the same thing. Who knows? This is a look that anyone can do. And I've been getting a lot of requests to do step-by-step -step tutorial. And that's why this video is going to be cut in like sections. So there's going to be the brows and eyes section. And then in the face section, the lip section, because that way you guys can skip to whatever parts you want. And I explained that all in the beginning. I have a tendency to repeat myself. So for eyebrows, I like to outline my eyebrows and then fill them in. Everyone does their eyebrows differently. I am not an eyebrow professional. I don't claim to be an eyebrow professional. My eyebrows still to this day aren't that good, but I'm going to show you guys how I do them anyways. So to outline my brows, I use the Anastasia Brow Definer Pencil. I am in the shade Dark Brown. Now I outline my brows differently than everyone else. I know that. People like to do the fine hair strokes. I personally just go straight in for the lines. I like my brows to be big and bold. I'm very well aware of the fact that they are big and bold. Once again, I do that on purpose. This is what the brow definer pencil looks like. It'd be nice if my camera would focus. Sorry about that. I always start with my right brow. I don't know why. Just do. I start kind of in the middle and make like that tail so I like create that length and then I outline the rest and then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this brow. All right, so this brow is outlined. As you can see, I kind of leave a little bit of room between the bottom line and the top one just because of how I blend. I start right where my first brow hair starts and then I arch it right here and then I end it right about here. Sometimes they're longer, sometimes they're shorter. It really all depends on the day. Always remember that eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Sometimes they're not friends and that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my other eyebrow off camera and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. So I had to fix this one a little bit so it kind of curves more than this one. I'm telling you, my right eyebrow always goes up higher than this one, and I hate it, so hopefully these are even. If not, this is about as even as they're gonna get. So once that's done, I like to take a brow tint. I've been tinting them lately rather than filling them in. I just like the way it looks better. You can see my natural hair is a little bit more, so it still looks a little natural even though they're very bold. I use the Ulta Beauty Brow Tint in the shade Medium, and the wand looks like this. And what I do is basically the same thing I did with when I outlined. I start right about here and then I work my way through and then whatever remaining product I have left I do in the front of the brow. And then I take a regular eyebrow pencil with a moderately clean spoolie and I blend it out as much as I can. I'll go ahead and show how I do this one on camera. I very lightly run it. I don't want to press too hard and pick up just a tiny bit more product if needed. 
and then also I will go back in with the pencil and kind of fix like any spots that are kind of messed up. I'm gonna comb that out. And then I kind of just go back in and fix whatever needs to be fixed. And that is a moderately decent eyebrow. Like I said, my eyebrows aren't perfect. I never claim them to be perfect, but I like them. I like the way they look. Yeah, that's really all that matters is if you like how you look. Everyone else's opinion, yeah, it's nice when people like it, but the only opinion that's gonna matter in the end is yours. And yeah, that is one eyebrow done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one off camera and be right back. All right, I'm back and that's basically how I do my brows. It's nothing exciting, nothing fancy, and obviously not perfect. They're big, they're bold, I love them. You do your brows how you wanna do them, I'll do them how I wanna do them. That's just how I do them. So that was it for the brow section of this video. Next section will be how to do an everyday eye makeup. Okay, so for the eye makeup look I'm doing today, I am going to use the Blood Sugar Palette from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. Again, like I mentioned earlier, you do not have to use the same products that I'm using for this video. These are just the products that I chose to use. You can use anything you want, any of the colors you want. I'm just showing you a really simple, easy, everyday look because the Blood Sugar Palette is very versatile and does have really pretty browns and nudes in there that we're going to work with today. So I always start off by priming my eyelids. Today I'm actually going to use my Ulta Beauty Tinted Eye Primer. This is in the color Champagne. I really like tinted eye primers, especially when you're doing an everyday simple look. It helps bring the look out more, especially because we're really not using a lot of shadows for this look. I think it really helps make it pop a little bit more. And it's always good to use an eye primer because again, it acts as a base for the eyeshadow and helps it stay on all day. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on and I'm going to blend it out with a Morphe R33 brush. So I'm gonna go in with the Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette, like I said, and we're gonna set that eye primer down with a white shade in here. This is called Glucose. We're gonna set the eye primer, that shade right there, and I'm just gonna set it with the same brush that I used to put the eye primer down with. A white base on top of the primer, I feel like, helps really bring out any color of eyeshadow look you're doing, and of course, you always wanna set any kind of base you have anyways, so I think white is the perfect face for any eyeshadow look. It just really brings out your eye and it does help bring out the colors too. All right, so now that we have that down, I am going to take a Morphe E23 brush. I'm gonna go into the shade right here, Tongue Pop, and I'm going to blend that in my crease as the transition shade. This is a really pretty, very nudish pink, and I like to take transition shades on a really fluffy brush to blend them out seamlessly and so they're not too harsh, because with transition shade in an everyday look, you want it to be really light and flushed out and not too harsh and in your face. And when doing any eyeshadows or transition color when you blend them you just want to do like windshield wiper motions such as this right like that and don't worry because we will be blending it out more right now you just want to focus on getting the color on the lid so I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other eye and then I'm gonna show you how we blend that out right, so what you want to do is wipe off the brush you just used I'm literally wiping them off on my shorts because I'm lazy and then you're gonna take that brush and you're gonna rub it just all over the color you did like you're really going to blend this out and to flush it out blend the top really well and just go right over it and keep blending see how it turns into just like a really nice shade and do the same to the other eye you can even take your finger and blend it a little bit too don't ever be afraid to use your fingers i learned this from tati if you don't follow tati on any social medias you really need to i'm gonna, I'm gonna go back in with the glucose and the tongue pop together and i'm going to blend some more to really seamlessly transition the crease Next, I'm going to take this cake mix color and I'm going to blend it on the outer V and into the crease. So what you do is you really focus on the outer V, blend it out nicely, and then bring the leftover product into the crease. It's going to just create a nice gradient so it's not too harsh. And again, make sure you're using like the windshield wiper motions and circular motions to blend it really well. Make sure you always like tap off the excess product again to avoid fallout and because you don't want to put like a splash ton of product on your face or your eye like that because it can look splotchy. I'm really gonna just circle that right there and then bring it in. 
and it just brings in some more depth and dimension when you just have the transition color here and then here where you have more in depth and I be sure to do it right below the transition color so the transition color can still peek through and even if you do take away from the transition color you can pick that color back up and blend the outside of this color which is exactly what we're gonna be doing I'm just really deeping this up so I'm gonna go ahead and take, oh, and I'm sorry, the brush I used for all of that just now was the Morphe M441, but now I'm gonna take the Morphe E17, go back in with that transition color and lightly buff out the edges of the cake mix color we use. You always wanna have a light hand when doing this and hold your brush further out here because if you hold your brush here, you have too much control and it can be really dark or splotchy and just kind of messed up. But when you have out here, it's less control and you can do more feathery strokes. It's much lighter and it turns out more seamless. So just very lightly feather out because you want a really nice blend. So very light and subtle and pretty so far. Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing with the outer V and crease, but a little bit lower to really deepen that area up. And we're going to go in with the shade Ouch right here. Very lightly, make sure you tap off the excess on this. And we're going to very lightly do the same thing, but just a little bit lower. And if you need to, go back in with the other colors and blend it out. Do the same thing to the other eye and then we'll go back and blend the colors out a little bit more to bring the other pinky tones back. So I'm just going to wipe off that brush and lightly blend the other colors, just very, very lightly. And I'm going to go back in with the other light colors we did to kind of bring them back because again, the darker you go, the more it takes away. So I always like to go back in an order. So I'll do the cake mix right above and then the tongue pop to blend that out and it'll bring everything back for a nice blended gradient. So I'm going to take the cake mix and blend it right above where we put that brown. See how it makes a nice gradient. Do the same to the other side and then go in with the tongue pop shade and blend the top part. Again, very light handed, not a lot at all. Very well blended out. Just lightly buff out this part here to kind of smoke it out just a little bit. And I'm going to take my Morphe E20 rebrush again, this one, and blend everything kind of together because I really want this to be a light, elegant look. And that's really gonna feather everything out. So I'm going to take my Morphe M224 brush. It looks like this, flat packing brush. Go in with this really pretty shade right here, Sweetener. So we're just gonna just pack that on the brush. You don't need to wet the brush for the shimmers or metallics in this palette or any Jeffree palette for that matter. They're really pigmented enough as is. I am going to pack it right here, almost like a half cut crease, but without cutting the crease. This is a simple like cheat way to do a half cut crease without having to use concealer or anything. When you do really light colors like this and then you pack a shimmer, it gives the illusion of a cut crease without cutting the crease. Fun trick, so. And then take your finger and just lightly blend. So now you almost have like the illusion of a very soft, delicate cut crease, but not quite. So I'm going to do the same to the other eye, and then we're going to blend the edges out just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take my finger, and I'm going to pack some of that color on just a little bit more to bring out more pop. And then I'm going to take a Morphe M506, and then I'll be lightly dipping into that ouch color again to blend the outside color up here, and then the tongue pop and cake mix up here. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Very elegant and soft, very everyday wearable. I love it. So for the lower lash line, I'm actually gonna mix two colors together. I'm going to mix that ouch color. So I'm gonna put the ouch color on first and then this O positive color on second. Blend it on the lower lash line. Gonna do the same with the other eye and take the same brush and dip into that O positive color and really blend it out. The O positive color. And since it's still a little dark for me, I'm gonna take a little bit of that glucose shade, which is the white one, and blend it over that too because I really don't want too heavy of a lower lash line. I just really soften it out some more. 
So on the camera, it's pulling up very dark, but I promise you it's not as dark as it's pulling up on the camera and you'll be able to see when I take the pictures and show you guys. And now we are going to take candy floss. We're gonna pack that in our inner corner and on the brow bone for a little bit of highlight. And I also like to kind of drag that underneath to really brighten it up a little bit as well. Gonna take my pinky and pack it on the inner corner as well just because I am very extra when it comes to highlight and I like it to just be a little bit bright. But since this is an everyday wearable look, I'm not gonna go too crazy here. Okay, now that the eyeshadow is done, we are gonna do liner, mascara, and lashes. So we're not going to do a winged liner because this is a simple everyday look. We are going to just do a line of liner, very thin. That way it'll help blend in the lashes better. So for eyeliner, I'm just gonna use the Too Faced better than sex eyeliner in the color deepest black get up close and personal with you guys and just do a thin line like that now do the same on the other eye and then i'm gonna go ahead and take my nyx jumbo pencil in milk white and i do white liner and the lower lash line and what that does is it really helps open up your eye more brighten it and i've really just been loving putting this white in the lower lash line see my eyes now and then after i put the white in you'll see how it really just helps brighten them and bring a pop and especially since this eyeshadow is a very light color it's really gonna help bring out your eyes and just make them look bigger and make it look brighter and you know a little less sleep deprived so this is my eye without the white liner and this is with the white liner. It really just helped brighten and open it up more. I feel a little bit more. Do the same on the other eye. Okay, and now we're gonna do mascara, then lashes. So the mascara, I suggest everyone in the world get this mascara. This is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang Mascara. This is the only mascara I think I've ever used on this channel. I swear by this stuff, even if you don't wanna wear falsies, this makes the appearance of falsies. It lengthens your lashes, it volumizes this. Volumizes this? That's not even a freaking word. Lengthen and volumize, I think are like the same thing. I'm not sure, but this mascara is amazing either way. So I like to do, like I'll do the underneath of my top lash but then I also do the top of my top lashes. I feel like it really helps coat them. And then I put the false lashes on. And then while the false lashes are drying, that's when I do my bottom lashes. And then after I do my bottom lashes, I put another coat of mascara on the top ones to blend in the lashes. I know that's like a handful, but you'll see and it'll make sense. So let's go ahead and do our top lashes first. Also, I don't know if you guys watched a previous video of mine that I did when I was doing my mom's makeup. You never want to pump your mascara wand because that gets a lot of air into the tube and dries your mascara out faster. You want to just twirl it when you want more product don't pump see how amazing these are and it doesn't make them clumpy or spidery or anything it just really brings out your lashes now you could leave it like this you could just do your top and bottom lashes with mascara with this look and be totally fine I'm just a little bit extra and I love to wear false lashes but you could leave it alone at the mascara if you wanted to and it would still look super pretty See, again, you could just put on your lower lashes and call it good, but again, I'm extra. So the lashes I'm gonna do use today are the Ardell lashes in the style 116s. Now these are doubled up, so they're actually usually not this like dark, but I put two pairs on top of each other, and I really like doing that with natural lashes because yes, they're still natural, but it still brings a little bit of volume and definition and dramaticness. You don't have to double up your lashes. That's just what I do sometimes with the um, Ardell 116s. I love to to double these ones up. I also really love to double up the Ardell Wispy Lashes. Oh my gosh, super stunning when you do that. The lash glue I use is Strip Lash Adhesive with Aloe. I don't know if Aloe does anything special, I just really like this lash glue. So you're going to do a thin layer of glue on the lash band, because I always have people ask me how to apply lashes, so here it is, ladies and gents. A thin layer of glue. Let it dry for about 30 seconds, give or take, so it gets tacky. That is the trick, to let it dry so it gets tacky. And again, because you already put mascara on your lashes the tacky glue with the mascara is going to help keep them on your eyeballs all right so now that it's tacky we're gonna go ahead and put it on you want to put it as close to your real lashes as possible obviously without sticking it in your eye now some people might need to use tweezers or a lash applicator to help put them on I don't personally have that issue but by all means go for it 
no false lashes false lashes i think it just really helped bring the look out some more and again widens the eyes with that white liner so i'm gonna go ahead and put on my other lash and be right back all right i am back and my lashes are on so we're gonna go ahead and just put a coat of that same mascara on the lower lashes Dunk the one one more time and then I put one more layer of mascara on the lower lashes and then the rest of the product that's on the wand, that's what I use to blend the falsies to the real lashes on top. This really helps create the illusion of a seamless blend so you don't see the lash band. Because you don't ever want to see your lash band. But that's also why we do that one line of eyeliner as well to also help coat that lash band. Or not coat but hide it. You know what I'm trying to say. All right, so that is it for the eyes. Let me get up close for you guys so you can see the eyes. Very everyday wearable, pretty like copper tone, false half cut crease. So that is it for the eye section of this. The next section of this will be the face and then the section after that will be the lips. So keep watching. All right, so now is the face portion of this. So we've already primed our face, so we're gonna go ahead and go right in with foundation. Again, use your own products, or if you have the same products as I do, that's totally fine. My holy grail foundations are the Maybelline Fit Me, which is what we're gonna use today, and the Maybelline Superstay. Those are like literally the world's greatest foundations ever. I don't care what anyone says. So I am in the shade 105 Fair Ivory. I'm gonna pour some on my damp beauty blender. Make sure you dampen your blue. I cannot talk right. Make sure you dampen your beauty blender before use. It definitely helps spread the product more evenly. I also like to use cold water to dampen it with. I learned this trick from my friend Veronica. It helps reduce puffiness and redness and honestly it works and it feels nice. Probably too much. I always end up putting too much on my damn sponge. <laughs> I put some on my neck too because you never want to forget to blend your neck. So I'm going to go ahead and blend this out and speed this up. All right, now that we have that on, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my Jeffree Star Cosmetics Concealer in the shade C1. I always like to use a concealer a shade or two lighter than my foundation because where you put the concealer is where natural sunlight hits. It makes you shiny. Honestly, it's really up to you what shade concealer you want. It's just my personal preference. Some people do match their concealer to their foundation. I just always to choose to have mine a little bit lighter. Kind of like, you know, we could always just leave it like this and create a new style if you want, but I don't suggest doing that. And I'm going to take the pointed more this and tip whatever magic and wow, I can't talk right and blend that out. All right, so now we are going to set all of that. I like to use a translucent setting powder just so there's no flashback. So I'm going to set my entire face with a Maybelline Fit Me on your translucent setting powder. And then after I do that, I'm going to go in with the Jeffree Star Cosmetics translucent setting powder and set mainly where I put concealer. Before I do that, I set my entire face first. And then go in with that Jeffree Star. It smells like cotton candy, by the way. I love it. You don't need a lot. Even then, that's probably too much. That's okay, because I'll just put it back into the container. Generous amount. Tap off some excess. Right where I put all of the concealer. So soft. I love this stuff. Can't wait for Jeffree Star's foundations to come out next year. Anyone else excited? I am pulling off more orange on my camera, but when I'm looking in my mirror, my skin is like flawless. I wish you guys could see how good it looks in my mirror. So maybe after the video, I'll like flip the camera around so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And of course, the selfies. So next for the face is a little bit of contour bronzer, if you will. So for beginners, you don't have to do this, but I choose to just to bring a little bit of color back to my face, you know, where the shadows hit. So I use the Anastasia Beverly Hill bronzer powder in the shade Tawny. And because I don't want to do a lot on my face, I'm going to take a 
smaller fluffy brush such as this this is the morphe e4 and i'm gonna lightly put it on my cheek you know where my double chin is down my nose and my forehead very lightly though you don't need a lot especially for an everyday look you don't need something crazy so i'm gonna go ahead and do that Also, don't worry about the harsh lines because I am going to take a bigger fluffy brush and I'm going to put it in the translucent setting powder and blend over this to make it much softer and less harsh. Let me take this brush with that setting powder again and really focus on blending to really soften that out. I'm gonna very lightly contour my nose and my double chin with that big fluffy brush and not a lot of product at all. Whatever's left, like the excess on both brushes, I just wipe down my nose because I really don't do a lot with my nose because I actually like how my nose is. So for blush, I'm going to take this palette here. These are all La Femme blushes that were gifted to me. So they don't really have any names or anything, but I'm going to use the lightest one right here. It's like a really pretty peachy, almost like lighter than my shirt. I don't know how to explain it. Really pretty blush. I'm going to take it on a Morphe 48 brush and lightly blend on my apple. Or is it apple your eye? So my cheekbone apple? Oh man, I just went full stupid. And these are very pigmented, so the same thing with the contour. I'm gonna put it on and then I'll take that fluffier brush and blend them out more. For highlight, I am gonna go a little crazy, but I really can't help myself. I am gonna use a Jeffree Star Cosmetics highlight. This is the Platinum Ice Palette, and I'm gonna use the shade Ice Cold. You don't have to use an intense highlighter for this everyday look if you don't want to. I just literally can't help myself, and I love a good crazy highlight. And so for highlighter, put it right here, and I blend it upwards as well, just to really highlight the top of the brow bone. My chin, my cupid's bow, the tip of my nose, and the bridge of my nose. I really love highlighting the tip of my nose and the bridge of my nose. I literally have no idea why <laughs> Jeffrey knows how to make a highlight that's for sure oh I love to be blinding I always make the joke that if the gods can't see you then you're not really highlighted And then a smaller brush for the tip of the nose and the bridge of the nose. You don't want to use a big brush for this part. Blend it with your finger. Put a little bit here. Bathe in your highlight. I'm not judging you. And then I do setting spray and then I fan myself out because I'm bougie. And then after that, we will go on to the next section of this video, which will be the lips. All right, next section is the lips. See you there. All right, lips are really easy. First off, always use a lip scrub. The lip scrub I'm using today is Peach Popsicle, mainly because I have about five or six different lip scrubs and I can never pick what one I want to use for the day, so I kind of just eeny, meeny, miny, mow it. Love me a good lip scrub. Mm. And this is the Jeffree Star ones, by the way, and if you've never tried these, you absolutely need to. Just be careful because they're really easy to eat the whole tin like a snack. And then I just eat all my dead skin skills off my lip. All right, so for lips today, I'm going to use a liquid lipstick and then a gloss over it. So I'm going to use the Jeffree Star liquid lipstick and bronze blood today. Super stunning. I overline my lips, and I mention this all the time that I love overlining my lips. I can't help it. Now, I usually only use a lip liner if I'm using a lipstick, and I don't use lipsticks very often, so I'm not much of a lip liner person unless I'm using a Kylie Cosmetics lip kit. Then that's different, of course, so... And then I'm going to do a little Jeffree Star gloss over it. I'm going to use this gloss in Shockwave. His glosses smell absolutely amazing. <gasps> he says creme brulee. I don't know. Creme blue heaven or however you want to say that. Oh my gosh. Hey, look at that. That is sickening. Pretty like gold and pink reflex. Oh my gosh. Love it. All right.
right everyone so that was today's video I really hope you enjoyed it I hope I helped you learn something um, if not let me know if I missed anything please let me know and any other video ideas you have let me know I don't know what my next videos are gonna be but I'm sure you guys will help me figure that out I had fun doing this I really hope that you guys liked it remember to stay strong stay beautiful and love yourself always bye glam fam